Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I got a haul to share with you. Yes, it is garage sale season here in our area. So we're actually splitting this up into two videos because the haul is quite big and I kind of have to position myself so you're gonna see different parts of our garage. Um, yeah, to share a haul with you or it'd be way too long and I say it is sales season here in our area not only is it garage sales moving sales estate sales yard sales just throw something out on your front porch in your driveway and put a sign up and we seem to be stopping at it so this one is an estate sale that holy cow we weren't even there on the opening hours of the sale and there's still a ton left So today we were out and about. We told ourselves we were only going to one a morning. And the next thing you know, you pass another garage sale and you pass another garage sale and you're like, well, there's another sign. And then you see a friend and they're going to another. So anyway, long story short, we went to way too many garage sales again. Oh, but I'm still going with that one YouTuber that said, this is our season. We're going to have winter. There's really not a lot in Goodwills right now, maybe everybody's having garage sales. They're just not donating it yet. So let me start off with what I found. So I'm just gonna, just gonna pick away. So right off the bat for 50 cents, yes, 50 cents. Oh my goodness. This humongous cutting board with feet. Oh, I love, and it's teak. Oh my goodness, it's teak. I am so super excited to get this one made over. I love cutting boards, especially I'm so, it's so satisfying to get all those scrapes and take it down to that wood. And anyway, that'll be one of the makeovers. So at the same sale for $5, I picked up this. So I could update this piece of wood, hopefully with some of the decoupage paper so i was super excited about this i did look to see that it does come unscrewed so that will be an easy makeover because sometimes you have to see can i take it apart how hard is it how much effort do i have to put into it same garage sale one dollar for this cute let all stool so yep it's just made out of two by fours but it's got cute little feet on it it's got a skinnier piece of wood um, so yeah, we'll, we'll create something out of this. For $2, I got this little enamelware butter dish. Oh my gosh, look at that. So it's a butter dish, two bucks, got a wooden lid on it. I almost am tempted to keep it myself because by my, my coffee pot, I have all enamelware for our, like our coffee station. So mm, I don't know, food for thought. And this was the most expensive thing here was this piece which was a $7 tray. Even though I'm not really a fan of this, I did look to see if I could take these off because I absolutely love the wood and then maybe see if I have some handles that I would like a little bit better on there. So I didn't mind paying $7 for it because I knew that I wouldn't have to do, there's if the wood's in great shape so I don't have to sand it or anything like that. Let's change out, see if I can change out some hey, This big boy, this, look at this big boy. Oh, look at, look at that on the sides. So this was a dollar, y'all. It was a dollar. Oh my gosh, what a beautiful old tray. It just, it just needs cleaned up. Beautiful, I don't know. I mean, I could put some paper in it. I could leave it as is. It'll, whew, I like it. I gotta move it out of the way. Right, so I love that. So then another sale we went to, cause that was one from one sale. Another sale we went to, they keep saying they're having a state sale. This is the second time we've been back. 
uh, I don't, they're like, we're gonna have a third. I don't think we'll be back, but I still did find something to buy. So for $2, I picked up a black, still in packaging, lantern. I have a collection of these on one of my china cabinets, my big hutch that I have my ironstone in. So I, I like the black. Of course, I like to like them to have a little bit more age, but we'll have patina so I could age it if I wanted to. Now they did have a set of owls and I, I did pick these up for a dollar because they do have the little knobbies on the back. So I did pick those up and I know when I got some from my friend Kathy's mom's estate, I donated them and everybody was like, oh, we would have bought those. So I'll put these on eBay. <laughs> um, the ones from Kathy's mom didn't have the stoppers, the little rubber protectors on the feet. So, and I didn't know people wanted them. So there you go. So then for 50 cents, I did pick up one of these bowls. Um, I, you know, I did the IOD transfers, cleaned these up and put some transfers in it. I, I think they're super sweet that way. I think I sold all of them. I sold a couple on eBay and then I sold a couple in our booth. And then for $6, you know, I'm weak when it comes to galvanized. I am weak. So there are these two short little ones. So great little put some terracotta pots, put, I don't know, candles. They need a bath, they need cleaned up, but I weak, weak, I just, I, my eye is drawn to galvanize. Then for 50 cents, I picked up this flag. I thought, what a great size that I could put in a picture frame behind glass, make it, um, all the flags that I did um, behind the glass and window and frames, those are all gone, those have all sold. I don't know if I'll get them done in time for the 4th of July because we're really, we're kissing it. We're kissing 4th of July right now. In that same sale, there was this little caddy. Now it looks like it was, um, I don't know, who is that Dollar General? What tag's that? The tag looks familiar to me, but it was just a cute little caddy. So it was a dollar. The other sale where I got the big trays, look at this bag. It's a Volkswagen bag. Um, just a little Volkswagen bag. I'll probably, I don't know, I'll probably try to sell this on eBay first. I've never seen such a thing. I thought it was just super cute. And you know, those people who, yeah. I, yeah, so this was only a dollar also. Uh, we also stopped at another estate sale. And it's funny because we chose to go to the one farther away first and then head back. And we probably should have flip-flopped it because that was the stuff we got at the, the one estate sale, but you just never know what, you know. Anyway, so the next estate sale, oh my goodness, we were two hours after it had opened, so I can't even imagine what they had glassware. They had collections, glassware, oh my goodness. And it was hard because they had stuff in totes still, and it was hot, that hot to be outside going through the totes in the boxes, but in the house it was air conditioning and they still had a whole bunch of glassware. So I'll show you what I picked up. So first off, I did pick up this um, Jack, 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 uh, Jack in the Box, Jack Pulper. Alex told me the name of it. I've seen the crazy lamp lady pick up this vase before. So you can correct me because I slaughter. I'm sorry, y'all, I just do but just a beautiful blue vase. Oh, I'm missing one, I'll have to go find it. And then I did pick up this other, oh my gosh, look at this vase. These are just nice. They had tons of Fenton, tons of, Mur I think the Murano was all gone, but oh my goodness. So the, then I got this vase. I love that it, you can see the bubbles, so it really shows that it was handmade. Now I know I got one. And then I also got this vase. Um, Lefton, that one still had the tag on it. I like colored vases. Vases do really well, whether I sell them on eBay, whether I sell them in the booth. And you know, I, I did pick up that Hippo not too long ago, the metal one. And so there was this little guy, he does, I don't think he, it is broken. What I think is it was missing a little bit of the glazing on it when it was um, done, um, but it still has its tag on it. I can't really read that tag um, there, 
but it was just a cute little hippo planter. Oh my gosh, and the little flowers. Oh, so I did I did grab that. Another sale we went to, I, we, I just picked up this. <laughs> now I don't really want the greenery, the Christmas greenery in it. I really wanted that caddy. So that's a little that's a little too much going on for me right now. I'm not ready for Christmas. <laughs> so it was five dollars for this caddy. And then we stopped at another sale, which actually she used the lady that when we got there, Alex was looking for PS5 or Nintendo Switch games that she had advertised, but we were late to that one. You just have to figure out which one you're going to go first to. So she was actually our the school's nurse. <laughs> so that was kind of neat back when my kids went to school. So I picked up this tier tray only because I don't have to do anything to it um, for $10. Then along with this little six drawer cubby. Oh, I like to do little cubbies. Um, the little knobs, uh, I don't know if they're wood or plastic, so we'll see. I might have to change the knobs out or paint them, but yeah, I like little cubbies. It's in good shape and cubbies, cubby sell. Now I thought this piece was nice. It's just a, like a candle holder, a vase. Um, looks like it's probably a Hobby Lobby piece, but just made out of driftwood. So I like, I like wood, galvanized, it all gets me. So then she had these steak pieces also with little birdies on them. And this one still has the plastic on it. And then so does this one. And then, let me see, I was trying to see where they, it just says Ashland. I don't see distributed by like who, who it's from or anything. And then there was this one. This one um, didn't have the coating still on it. So um, I think these were $3, a dollar a piece. So that was nice. We stopped at one more sale and then that sale was, um, um, it was a gentleman we've seen a lot at the local auction that we go to. So he's a reseller also. So you know, you have to, you have to control your inventory. So I picked up this old, <laughs> this, I can't help it. I like, I like these. I like that I can hang it. I have a little display going on right now in my laundry room. If I get to it, I will share it with you. And then <laughs> I, I was probably weak, but um, I thought they were 25 cents, but then she he ended up charging me a dollar a piece, started all, but um, cause it wasn't marked, but I, just these little books, um, little pioneer, I think they're, I don't know. They're like little bank books, but there's just something about littles that just gets me. Um, so I picked these up and then this is like a war stamp one. It actually had some, um, people's pictures in it, of, and they passed in the war against France. So anyway, I don't know. I, if I'll just keep them as my own collection or sell them, I'm, I'm, that I'm not positive of. For a quarter, I did pick up another pair of old, I don't know, the black handle just gets me. I like that, you know, my eyes drawn to black. And then I picked up the set of spoons from him also. also. And then um, look at what it says. It's my name. You don't see Yvonne very often, so. Four of the spoons actually say say that. And then we have a Cecilia. And then um, an Emily. And then a Marie. Oh, so actually three of them say Yvonne. And then the rest say, so yeah, I don't see my name. The only other thing I have is a talcum powder that's really old from the, oh my gosh. 30 year, 35 years ago when I started thrifting with my one of my first bosses. Um, yeah. Whew. <laughs> so anyway, I, I did get one more thing. I forgot, cause he's heavy and I didn't want to put him on that table. So I got this guy, oh my gosh. He is a cement elephant um, from the estate sale with all the glassware. He was sitting outside. He's in great shape. So now, <laughs> I will share you, Alec doesn't have time to share the few things he got there, but so he got a whole bunch of stuff. I got the vases, I got this, um, not a whole bunch, I guess, I, I won't say a whole bunch, but eight bucks, that's what she charged us. That's how much 
they were like, just take it, please. We just have all this stuff. <laughs> I'm like, wow. And I'm like, are you sure? Can I give you a 10? You know, she's like, no, just eight bucks. Just take it, go. <laughs> I'm like, oh my goodness. <sighs> so I will take the camera down. I'll share with you what Alex found. Okay, so this is what Alex got. So this, this plate. And then this little tea. It's just a little tea. He, I mean, he knows what he's looking at. So, um, and then these little, they all need baths, but um, this little cream and sugar with this little pitcher. He, that's what he got. Part of the $8 of that estate sale that had all the glassware. And then we stopped at another sale. He picked up this helmet for $5. I guess they retail um, are selling on eBay for about 80 bucks. And then he picked up two games, 75 cents a piece, and they resell in the 20s, so well worth his time. And then where I got the trays and the Volkswagen, he got this little game. Um, there was a Game Boy with a little cartridge. Um, it is missing its battery holder, but so he's hoping that he can find one of those. And then he got this camera for a dollar. So that was his part of our shopping day. So just uh, just some fun finds. And I love how he has such a variety of stuff. His eBay, he I, he's teaching us, I need to get a variety of stuff on my eBay also. So you just get a lot of people looking for glassware, games, bikes, bike stuff, yeah, cameras electronics it's just yeah he is and he's selling i i'm very proud of him and then this is the other part of the eight dollars that we spent so he just took a shining to these beauties oh my gosh so at eight dollars you're definitely going to make your money back whether they're worth a ton but sometimes when it catches your eye it catches your eye they're just beautiful so it was so hard. I showed you some of the video. It was so hard. I can't even imagine what would have been there before. I didn't take any outside video because, like I said, it was 100 degrees in the sun, I swear. So, yep, that was part of the $8. And yeah, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. There will be a few little makeovers if you want to stay and watch those. Now, after that haul, you see why we separated this into two videos. I cannot believe this was one week of shopping at garage sales. But anyway, I knew when I saw that little bowl exactly what I could do with it because I've actually done these little bowls. So I'm just going to take some of the IOD transfers and rub them on the inside. And it's just a quick, easy, huge statement to this little bowl. And then to seal those transfers in, I'm just using some Verithane Clear Natural Wax. And actually going to refresh the whole entire bowl with it. It definitely, it didn't need sanded or anything, but it definitely could use a drink. Speaking of the Verithane, a natural wax, my favorite. We cannot find it here locally, apparently. They're only shipping to bigger cities, and I was blessed to receive two cans from a precious viewer along with another Bible for my collection. You guys don't know how much it means to me that people actually think of me when they're out shopping or go out of their way to send stuff to me. Oh my goodness. I just have to do a little shout out here in the middle of our video to say thank you to you all. So now I am kind of looking for the date on 1949. She picked this Bible up at an estate sale. And then thank you again for thinking of me. Two cans of urethane Moax and a Bible for my collection. I am beyond blessed.
So I knew I didn't want to paint these galvanized or add any kind of patina. I just really like them as is. But after seeing the label on the bottom, bottom and it said Hong Kong, I think, I thought it would be fun to use some labels on these. So finding what I had left in this stash of IOD transfers, I'll link everything down below in my description box of what I used. But this will just make it an easy just eye catching whatever you decide to use these little bowls tubs galvanized tubs for but since there's some age to these tubs i want to go ahead and just take a little bit of steel wool to just gingerly take off some of the labeling so it doesn't look like it's crisp new labeling i just want it to look like it's been worn off with time then a little bit of that natural clear wax to seal it in and they are finished. As I said, I wasn't really a fan of those handles on this beautiful wood. So my husband, Chris, if you're new to our channel, helps me out a lot. And so he is now removing the handles and we're going to go ahead and see what we have and our stash of stash of handles to what the spacing of the holes, what handles we have in there that will fit this. Not every makeover has to be an extreme makeover like adding those labels. But the one thing I like to do is I always like to take any kind of store tags, any of the I thrifted it here, there, Goodwill tags. And at this moment, these are all garage sale finds. I definitely want to be able to remove my garage sale tags also, especially if I am reseller, which is what we are. I don't want to have any of those previously purchased tags on my items. I'm not sure if you can tell on camera, but these handles are a little bit more antique bronzy looking. So I'm just going to take some ebony rub and buff and change the color out on these. The original screws did not fit. So Chris took the screws that fit these handles to the vise and then used a multi-tool cutting blade to cut them down. So that is always an option if you can, if you don't have screws that fit to cut the screws down. next up is this beautiful teak cutting board and it's sad because one of the wooden feet is broken and they were built into the cutting board itself so not only is there a couple holes on the top that I need to fill in but I also need to cut off the legs and replace those first I'm going to go ahead and start working on the scratches on the top the knife marks what have you so I start off with 80 grit to take some of the wood down, take it down level past the, scr the scratches. And then to finish it off, when you're taking 80 grit, it leaves it at a rough, uneven feel texture, you can tell. And then for cutting boards, I always move up from that. I go from the 80 to the 150 to the 220. The higher the number, the more smooth, the lower the number, the more product it takes off. If you're curious about sandpaper. I'm really not sure what was in these holes if there was something raised above so what i'm doing here i have the star bond medium thick glue and it is black so this is the perfect opportunity it almost acts like an epoxy when you want to fill in a crack and or in this case a hole so all i do is put it in the hole use some of the 15 second activator to dry it and then I will sand off and make sure that it's even. Now I need to cut the feet off. Like I said, they were built into the board. Uh, yeah, with a peg, the whole, yep, glued in. So not something you can just pop right out. So I'm just using this fancy saw that Chris has in his stash of tools. I'm not sure what the name is, but I can link it down below. It is a very sharp tool but it will cut these flush 
because I need to stand where I cut. I probably had it at too much of an angle is why it left a mark. So my bad of using the tool, but as you see, I had to use a little bit of oil to get the tag residue off. Hopefully I'm not going to take out the signature of the teak, but I do need to sand and make this board completely even in the color texture. So not only will I go over the black or the bottom of it, but I will go over the sides too. Now that I worked my way up on the grit, it made it all nice and smooth. I'm going to wipe off any sandy dust, sandy residue that's left behind. And then we can let it dry out and then I will get it oiled. And since we tend to flip a lot of items, we have quite the arsenal in our stash. So these are actually little screw in rubber feet. I'm going to call them little legs, so I'm going to place those on the bottom to help rise this cutting board back up. Well, I don't know about you all, but when I'm at a sale, sometimes it's a grab and go. I even do that at the thrift store. So did not realize that this little top has a little bit of wonkiness. I just saw the character that I absolutely loved of this little stool bench. Oh my goodness. So what Chris is doing here, he's just taking a nail set, seeing if he gets the screws that have worked their way up back down a little bit, if it will tighten up that bend just a little bit. did bring it down just a little bit but once you flip it to the side you can tell that the 2x4 leg actually is not level so over time of it just always being there yeah that's the way it's going to stay so it's going to be one of those perfectly imperfect pieces then one of the front pieces of wood is cracked but if I go to remove that that's a big chunk out so I don't want to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some of the clear CA glue and put a little bit in there. Chris is helping me pull it, lift it out with a scraping tool so I can get some of the glue in there, push it back down. We'll put a, a little squirt or two of the 15 second activator that will dry it. And then we can go ahead and sand it. <laughs> I'm really just going to leave this little stool as is so it is really got a red stain on it it was very raw I needed it to touch you would have one of those that would grab a dusting rag and leave the little pieces behind so I definitely wanted to sand it so it was nice and smooth so now what I'm doing I'm taking a mixture of the Waverly antiquing wax a little bit of the ink chalk paint and that's going to hopefully tone down the red and just restain this piece So I'd like to say that we're going to step it up a notch and make our next makeover a little bit harder, but no, it's really not going to be that hard. So first thing I'm going to do is take and remove this piece of wood and it's actually wood. I'm so used to it being an MDF board, but it's actually wood. <laughs>
and that actually sanded off very easy so now here is my easy change i just absolutely love recycles decoupage paper and this is actually the tissue paper so it's the thinner but oh look at that beautiful sheep image so now what i'm doing is i'm just eyeballing where I'm going to be centered, that my lines are a little bit, you know, I may be a little bit off here and there, but that I am pretty much centered. To adhere it on the wood, I'm just going to use a polycrylic. And I usually use the matte one or the satin if I can't find the matte. So all I'm gonna do is fold it in half to keep my spacing that I had it centered. I'm just going to apply it to the wood. And since this is wood and I notice sometimes the polycrylic will soak into really dry wood, I just have to kind of keep an idea of if I have dry spots or not. Then after I got it all on, I'm going to put another coat of that polycrylic over the top of it, trying to get out as many of the wrinkles as I can. But I never mind wrinkles. I think it adds character, but it's all personal. Now I propped my round up and what I'm doing here is I'm taking some sandpaper and I'm cutting off that outer ring of the paper that's left. And I'm doing this because I'm doing this wet because I want to be able to smooth the ends of the tissue paper down that the paper's not, the dry paper's not causing it to be up. I just want to make sure that it's properly adhered while it's still wet. When you know us crafters, we don't like to throw anything away. There's some perfectly good grain sacks left on these pieces that I just took off that sheep. So I'm going to attach them to this little caddy. So I'm just going to cut off a workable because I left that whole circle in the middle until I decided what I wanted to do. But it's actually a perfect fit. Thank you. 
And then even though I like the green tack as is, I did remember that I do have some cut off wording pieces in my toad where I keep all my papers at. So I went over to see if there was anything that fit. And this piece from, I think the rooster, the rooster and the cow actually fits. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to square it up just a little bit to add it to one of these sides. Added wording to one side, left the other side plain with the green sacks. Now I'm just going to go in and sand it just a little bit. I just want to look, make it look like it's a label that's been worn off. And there's lots of texture. It, the little caddy itself had lots of texture. So I'm going to go ahead and just see how you can barely see that wording is exactly what I wanted it to do. So then after I get it all sanded, I'm going to go back in with some Waverly Wax and darken it up just on the outside a bit. Next up is this cubby and I love the little details the, I think the knobs are wood but they're definitely discolored and I'm not really a fan of the cream mission color and then we got some damage on the bottom of the MDF board but so first off I'm gonna go ahead and remove the knobs Now, one, because it has damage, and two, because it is MDF board, I'm going to go ahead and prime it with some of this red Rust-Oleum paint. I want to paint it white. So this is a primer, and it's supposed to really stick well to these types of wood. Now, when it comes to the cubbies, I'm not going to really try to prime the inside of them. I don't want to get a huge paint build up, but definitely want to do the outside of this piece. For some contrasting colors, I sprayed the knobs black with rust -Oleum's flat black in the paint and primer, and now I'm sealing them in with some polycrylic. So I'm actually going to be using a piece of leftover section of some more of the decoupage paper but i need to make sure that i have my drawers they didn't all fit the way you thought they were going to fit i had to make sure that they were in there properly and that, that i had them all facing upright to be in the same direction it's the little things that matter for some reason so now i'm just trying to figure out how much of the wording i can get on look at like i said we crafters just don't throw anything away And I have my piece a little bit more workable, meaning that it's closer to the size that I need that it's not going to be pulling up because I'm going to very carefully, without gluing my <laughs> drawers shut, just put some of the polycrylic on to attach the paper to. And 
yes, why this is still wet, I'm going to go ahead and take a X-Acto knife and a very, like, really push my ruler in there to have a sharp edge because a lot of times when the paper's wet, it just wants to tear. So I want to be able to get this all cut off and remove my drawers while everything's all wet because I don't want my, yet again, I don't want to be gluing my drawers into this little cubby. So I'm working on it while it is wet. That I have all six drawers cut apart. I'm going to go ahead and put another coat of the polycrylic over the top of them. And then, why it's still wet again, I'm going to actually go ahead and screw the knobs back in. That way I can take each individual drawer out and make sure that, yet again, I am not gluing this all together and making myself a hot mess. go ahead and sand any excess paper that's hanging over the edge of these drawers and then I'm going to go in with the exacto knife and cut the slats of the drawers if you notice they had a couple little slats on there just so you don't see that shadow line underneath and it just gives it some more visual I would have added one more coat of the polycrylic just to make sure where I cut the slats in case it was drying that that was good and adhered. And now I'm just going to take a little bit of rub and buff. I didn't color the screws and they're rusty and they're really kind of sticking out. So just a little dab of rub and buff to blend them in. The looks of the dirt, I think this tray was used outside. So I'm going to go ahead and take it back outside and hose it off and get all that dirt out. Oh, would you look at that? This piece of recycled tissue paper fits perfectly in the inside of this. So I was actually going to basically leave it as is. And then, you know, I got my new shipment from Zazzle. So I cannot help myself. Would you look at that pig? Just a little overhang on the top and the bottom. And the paper does stretch when you adhere it on. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that same procedure of the Zacto knife and the ruler and remove it.
that that layer of polycrylic is dry, I'm going to go in with some steel wool, even out any of the texture that is left behind from wrinkles or just the polycrylic in general. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and seal this whole tray in. It is left unfinished. I want to make sure that it is protected in case anything ever spills on it. It doesn't get absorbed into it. My last makeover, yes, if you stayed this long, thank you. So this is actually a frame that I bought at the weekly auction that is here locally for $2. Yep, nobody wanted it. That's usually the lowest they go is $2. So it is a perfect size for that 50 cent flag. Now, it's, you might think, yes, this is older, but it is just a print on a piece of cardboard. It is all faded, but look at the age of this frame i love frames and i love when they have some age to them so first i need to remove all the hardware i need to get everything out so i can start building it back up So now I really want to show off the details of this frame. So I'm going to start off by painting it black first. And instead of spray painting it, I'm going to just use a brush and some Waverly ink chalk paint. I love this stuff that's so heavily pigmented that one coat will be plenty. Now when my black is drying, I'm going to figure out how to create a backdrop for the flag and little did I know that this is the perfect piece of wood that is some hard cardboard that the print is printed on so I should be able just to glue it back together and attach it to that board. Now I do have a little bit of holage underneath but I think if I just cover that up with some of that same ink black paint that it will be perfect but then I do need to take off the stick that is attached to the frame, just removing three staples. I've got it all glued up. I'm going to go ahead and use some tape for a clamp. I don't want to put a clamp on it. It's really not that thick a board. I don't want to take a chance of cracking it. So now I need to go ahead and seal my ink chalk paint in using some polycrylic. I guess I could have saved myself by just spraying it, but I did have something in my spray room that I couldn't move at that moment. Now I want to give this frame an aged look, so I'm going to go ahead and do the crackle effect. So what I'm doing is I just have some Dollar Tree glue. I'm just going to go ahead and squirt it on all over the frame, then take a paintbrush and then brush it nice and smooth. And I'm actually not going to wait very long at all to put paint on top of this. This will give me smaller crackles if I apply it as soon as it is still wet that I've just put it on. And then now that my frame is dry, I'm going to go back in with some sandpaper. I want a little bit of that gold to show through just to really give it that age. Look at how all that detail popped with those crackles.
to secure this on to the back, I'm just taking these little glass little hinges that we get off of Amazon. You just put the one duckbill side onto your object that you want to hold still and then screw the other in there. So I'll do probably about eight, ten of these to hold this in place. To make the back side look pretty, I'm going to go ahead and use some of this paper bag construction paper that we have here in our shop to cover up that back. So just cut it off to size and now I'm just going to hot glue it on. And that it is ready to hang on the wall. A couple eyelet holders and some heavy gauge wire that's heavy enough and strong enough to support the weight of this frame along with that piece of glass. So thank you so much for going shopping with us at Garage Sales, watching my haul, staying for the makeovers. I really do appreciate it. It's just, you never know what kind of content I'm gonna be bringing because you just never know what's out there to make over or go to or check out. So thanks for watching today's video, guys. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what I'm up to. Bye!